Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Molly Hendrickson with an update from Denver 7. The next time you head to the gym, you may want to think twice about what you leave in the locker room. Lakewood police are searching for a man who stole several credit cards out of a locker at a local rec center. As Denver 7's Micah Smith explains, not even a lock could stop the thief. Typically, we avoid leaving our valuables in the car when we go to the gym, so we bring our items with us, put them in a locker, and lock them up. But according to Lakewood Police, this thief came prepared and had tools to cut those locks off. Police say on April 22nd, this man, come take a look at your screen, went into the locker room where he stayed for about an hour. Police say the man cut off the lock to at least one locker and stole credit cards. Within just a few hours, the thief was swiping those credit cards at five different King Supers in the metro area. Lakewood investigators tell us they do have video from each time the man used the credit cards. Police say the pictures they're providing of the suspected thief are the best quality images from that surveillance. If you know who this person is and or where they may be, Lakewood investigators want you to give them a call at the number on your screen. It's 303-987-7240. Police say they've been able to solve quite a few of these crimes with help from the community. So they're help hoping once again, the community will help lead them to a suspect in this case. Reporting in Lakewood, Micah Smith, Denver 7. And the warmer weather always seems to bring out the thieves. In Highlands Ranch, someone smashed out the windows of at least 17 cars. Residents woke up to find the damage yesterday morning. And while it's possible this was nothing more than a terrible teen prank, Douglas County deputies say thieves are also stealing garage door openers in the same area to try to get in your home. A 20-year resident of the area says he's never seen anything like it. He knew something was wrong when his dog started barking in the middle of the night. And all of a sudden something like this happens and there's a cop at your door at 2.30 in the morning. It's, it's very, it just kind of throws you. So police say remember to take your valuables from your car, lock your doors, and park in a well-lit area. Following up today, conservative groups have dropped their attempts to recall State Representative Tom Sullivan. Sullivan is the father of Alex Sullivan, who was killed in the Aurora Theater shooting. He made gun control a central focus of his campaign and co-sponsored the red flag bill. The group behind the recall says it will now focus its efforts elsewhere. You can read their full statement and the response from those who support Sullivan right now on the DenverChannel.com. The Adams 14 School District in Commerce City is a step closer to going under new management. The school signed its contract with MGT Consulting Group. Now the State Board of Education will give its final approval. Adams 14 is the first district in our state to be forced to turn over control of its schools because of low test scores and performance. Well, we've warned about powerful rapids this season and already we're seeing the deadly effects. On Monday, a 42-year-old man from Texas died on a rafting trip on the Arkansas River in southern Colorado. He was there on a Boy Scout trip with his son. The group's raft had flipped over Monday afternoon west of Canyon City. The man killed was wearing a life jacket and a helmet and the trip was with a commercial rafting company. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez spent time on the river and saw firsthand the dangers. In the middle of the rapids, there's a real danger. You could fall in the river or the raft could flip over. After spending several hours with one rafting company on the Arkansas River, they tell me the same amount of danger exists regardless of the water levels. Floating along the river provides for beautiful scenic views and thrills with a hidden danger. On average per year, more than 200,000 people visit the Arkansas River between Buena Vista and Canyon City. American Adventure Expedition says they want to make sure everyone who visits has a fun ride while making sure they're doing what they can to mitigate any risks while keeping rafters safe. Every year we train new staff, we train new guides, we put them through a three week training program out there on the river and basically we try and simulate any scenario that we might encounter on the river. The large amounts of snowpack is impacting several communities. On Monday, we spent the day in Lake City where they're preparing for the possibility of flooding by reinforcing parts of town. During our trip in Medano Creek on Sunday, we saw how high water levels are creating a surge flow that hundreds are rushing to witness. As the snowpack continues to melt, its impact on all these communities will be different, especially as water levels reach their peak. In Buena Vista, Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. And the flows on the Arkansas River are so concerning, organizers of America's longest-running Whitewater Festival have canceled four events. The Mountain Mail in Salida reports the event is still on for the weekend, but pared down due to the more intense conditions. 
This week's rafting death is the second we've reported in just the past week. A man died while rafting on the Eagle River last week. He was out with four friends when their raft also flipped. Everyone else made it to shore safely. A state water well inspection program meant to protect our health is coming short, according to a new state audit. The report found out of the 4,000 new wells built last year, only 310 were inspected. Those wells are supposed to be checked during key phases of construction and to ensure no contaminants can pollute drinking water. The report also found the inspection program paid unnecessary salaries to people who didn't even work for the program last year. Colorado's wet spring means we may be sharing nature with more ticks mm. this year. Denver 7's Nicole Brady spoke to a doctor who says ticks are more than just an annoyance. We have several different species of tick in Colorado. The Rocky Mountain wood tick, though, is the one to really watch out for when you're up in the mountains, places like Estes Park. That tick can cause Colorado tick fever, which won't kill you, but can cause some blad flu-like symptoms. You can also get infections like tularemia or tick-borne relapsing fever from ticks. So the best thing you can do this summer is look over yourself after you spend time outdoors. Most of the diseases ticks will give you, the tick has to sit and feed on you for multiple days, so you have a chance to look for it. Some other things you can do, wear a repellent that contains DEET. Now, if you're worried about DEET, just be sure to wash it off at the end of the day. Another tip, take tweezers with you on your hikes because you'll wanna have those. If you get a tick bite, you'll wanna pull it out very gently. If you're not careful, you'll leave the head of the tick in. Um, you don't want to do that, but you can't do anything about that once that's happened. Yeah, the doctor there might make you want to never go outside, but I'll leave you with some good news. We do not have the tick that causes Lyme disease here in Colorado. Nicole Brady, Denver 7. Lisa has a look at another nice day ahead. It is beautiful and not as much sunshine this morning. You can see quite a bit of cloud cover, but this is going to clear up here in the next couple of hours and it's going to be a beautiful, mostly sunny day. So take a look at Futurecast starting off in the 50s this morning. We're likely going to get into the 60s just before lunch, mid to upper 60s before 12 and then highs right around 72 to about 75. Very slim chance of seeing an isolated storm in the mountains today. Overall, it's going to be another pretty dry day statewide for us. Early Thursday morning, 50s and then 60s by about 8 o'clock. We're going to see highs tomorrow afternoon in the 80s. It looks like right around 82 to about 85. You'll notice a few more thunderstorms, though, popping up tomorrow. So there is going to be a better chance of some afternoon storms starting Thursday. Today, though, looks great. We've had two great Rockies games this week. It's been beautiful weather against the Cubs, and they won both games. Today, it's a day game. Uh, first pitch is at 110 and will be at about 70 degrees by that point. Low to mid 70s by the end of the game and pretty perfect again mostly sunny tomorrow that chance for a few thunderstorms and it, there is going to be a marginal risk you can see here in the darker green area just east of I-25 where a few of these storms could turn a little stronger some larger hail and wind a possibility likely just some general thunderstorms a little closer to Denver we're going to see an afternoon storm each day as we head into the weekend Friday we're at about 80 degrees and then Saturday and Sunday you guys it does get a little cooler mid to upper 70s with a chance of storms each afternoon. Thanks, Lisa. The U.S. women's national soccer team got off to an historic start at the FIFA Women's World Cup in France with a dominating 13-0 win over Thailand yesterday. That's the most goals ever in a World Cup game, women or men. Colorado was represented in that scoring barrage as well. Lindsey Horan from Golden scored a goal in the game to put the U.S. up 3-0. Horan's parents were on hand in France to watch their daughter's first World Cup goal. And Highland Ranch's own Mallory Pugh also scored her first ever World Cup goal. In our Colorado, we talk constantly about the growth and how it's impacting the cost of living. And while renters are still paying the most for an apartment in Denver, renting in the suburbs is right up there in price. Rental company Zumper crunched the numbers from active listings in May. And in Denver, the median rent for a one-bedroom apartment was $15.40, but Broomfield and Centennial were right behind at $15.10. Aurora, the most affordable in terms of rent, at about $11.90 and then the median rent in Colorado as a whole. Also, it's prices like that that have Denver renters looking to move elsewhere in our Colorado. Apartment lists looked at where those renters are now trying to go. 15% are looking to go south to Colorado Springs, 10% looking west to Boulder, which really isn't any cheaper, and another 12% may be headed north, 7% to Fort Collins, and 5% to Greeley. 
Build-A-Bear thinks it's come up with a way to avoid the out-of-control lines we saw last year for its Pay Your Age promotion. This year, you sign up through the Build-A-Bear Bonus Club Rewards Program. You still pay your age for a bear, so 3-year-olds pay $3, 10-year-olds $10. Build-A-Bear will give out more than 200,000 Pay Your Age coupons. The promotion itself runs from June 24th to the 28th, but you have to sign up by this Sunday. Well, Colorado, let's see what we can do for a local World War II veteran about to turn 100. This milestone, Frank Cunningham could use a little extra joy for this birthday, though. He has survived two strokes, and his wife of 72 years just passed away last year. His grandson says one of his favorite things is just receiving greeting cards, so they're asking for 100 cards for his birthday on June 29th. And we can do better than that. Let's get him 100,000 cards. If you want to send a card, we have the address posted to the denverchannel.com. I want to say thank you for watching this Denver 7 Now update. Make sure you check back here later today for another update and download the free Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.